Hello, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Douglas Johnson. I am a certified yoga teacher at the advanced 500 hour level. I'm an ordained minister and a keratin artist. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about oneness, experiencing oneness, how you can experience this for yourself. Maybe you hear about oneness in yoga or spirituality. You think, well, I don't experience oneness. I feel very separate individual. So I'll give you a very simple method by which you can begin to explore the experience of oneness. Before I get into that, I do wanna thank my patrons on Patreon. This video, even though it's me here talking, is a community effort. So there are a group of people who support me on the Patreon platform and pay me monthly uh, and support me in doing this work, and I could not do it without them. So I want to thank them up front. And if you'd like to become a part of that community, please check out the links below. All right, so oneness. <laughs> How do we experience oneness? What is oneness? Well, oneness is effortless. It's your true nature. It's the way things really are. But unless we are pointed to what's right in front of our face, you might say, we tend to not see it. There's the old um, joke about the fish saying to the other fish, what is this water I keep hearing about? So we're swimming in it. Um, we are it. And it seems like to us, because of what we've been trained to focus on and think about that we are separate, but that couldn't really be further from the truth. So what is a simple way that you can begin to experience oneness? Now, before I tell you, I will point out that we might think that oneness is immediately this peaceful and blissful experience, that we would choose oneness if we had the choice, but nothing could be further from the truth. <laughs> the truth you're constantly not choosing oneness. You're constantly choosing to not experience that, to not focus on that. It's right there, but you just are choosing not to habitually, not consciously. Consciously, you might think, oh, I want to experience oneness. So the other thing I'll say is when you experience it, it may not be what you thought it was going to be. It may not be this blissful experience, at least not right away. In fact, you might find it quite boring, quite dull, um, maybe even quite uncomfortable, like you don't want to experience that. Um, so I just want to point that out because I think in spirituality, a lot of times we hear about these yogis and people going into meditation or experiencing unity consciousness and it being very blissful. And I'll say it can be, and it is, but in a sense, it isn't for the uninitiated. In fact, for the uninitiated, it can be quite scary and it could be something that you actually want to run away from, not encourage. All right, so how can you experience oneness? Well, in every yoga class, at the end of the class, we have Shavasana. And when I lead people to Shavasana, there's almost always a few people there who are unable to be still. Uh, in my classes, Shavasana usually lasts about five minutes, which is 10% of the class time, five, six minutes. And even for that relatively brief amount of time, from a meditator's perspective, these people are not able to stay still for that amount of time. They have an itch or a scratch, or they need to adjust something or whatever it is. So, these people probably think, well, I'm uncomfortable, so I need to adjust, or I need to move, or I just don't want to be still, okay? So again, I just don't want to be still. Well, who is the I who doesn't want to be still? And is that I in charge, or are you in charge? So again, if you have no interest in experiencing oneness or uh, going deeper, that's fine. But if you say, well, I want to experience oneness, I want to know what that's about, 
then just being still and quiet is one way you can begin to experience that. And what I like to say is if you open your mouth, there's a million different things that you could say. You could sing, you could speak poetry, you could speak a dozen different languages, like anything could come out of your mouth. But there's only one way to be silent. Everyone across the entire world, doesn't matter what language they speak, they're silent in exactly the same way. Okay, so if we're again talking about unity, we're talking about oneness, okay? What is the one thing that every human being does in exactly the same way? Silence. We close our mouths. In a sense, we don't know what language we speak. We don't know if we have a pretty voice or an ugly voice. We don't know anything, okay? We're all the same in silence. If we're in a room and everyone is silent, then everyone is the same in that regard. The minute we open our mouths and we begin speaking, some people will speak this language, some people will speak that language, some people will speak eloquently, some people will speak in a vulgar way, some people will speak loud, some people will speak soft, some people will have a harsh, rasped voice, others will have a soft and smooth and pleasant voice, okay? The minute we open our mouth, we're all different, but as long as we shut our mouths, it's all the same. Movement is the same way. If I move, I get up and I decide to move, I could dance, I could walk, I could run, I could do yoga, I could move a million different ways, okay? There's only one way to be still. You just stop. Stop what you're doing and you're still. And I don't know if you can see this or understand this, but do you see how it's effortless? I have to make an effort to dance. I have to make an effort to talk. I have to make an effort to sing. Do I need to do that to be quiet and still? Right now I'm in a graveyard and it's full of people who are quiet and still. It, you don't even have to be alive to be quiet and still. <laughs> quiet and still is the universal. It's the default. Uh, and yes, there is a relationship, you could say, with what we see as death. In the Zen tradition, they say, die on your cushion so that you can truly live. And I agree with this statement. I think you need to die so you can really enjoy the movement. You need to be quiet and still and see what's there in the quiet and the stillness so that then you can celebrate the movement that comes from that quiet and stillness. Otherwise, we tend to move because we're trying to compensate for some perceived lack that really isn't there, okay? So experiencing silence and oneness, again, it's much easier than we think. How do you do it? Just stop. Stop speaking. Stop doing. Be still. Again, one of my favorite passages from the Bible is be still and know I am God, okay? But you can even shorten it, be still and know. If you want knowledge, if you really want to know reality, you want to know eternity, you want to experience, in a sense, what the divine experiences, you want to experience oneness, unity, be still, be still, be quiet, stop. <laughs> Another way of saying it, uh, Gangaji's teacher, Papaji, supposedly when she went to see him, she had done all these spiritual practices her whole life. She was seeking, seeking, seeking. And he said, stop, just stop, stop. Okay, as great as those practices may have been to bring her to where she needed to be, she was at the point of ultimate realization. And the instruction is stop, stop trying. Stop trying to be spiritual. Stop trying to be one because the trying itself is interfering with it, okay? So 
I get it. If you lay down in Shavasana or you sit down in meditation and you feel that that's very difficult for you, you're not alone. I understand. Many people will experience that. Okay. And again, there might be a lot of fear there. I assure you there's nothing to be afraid of. Okay. I'm not denying that you're feeling fear or that you might feel like you need to get up or you might feel like you need to move or you might feel like you need to do something. But a very important step on the spiritual path is realizing that just because I feel something, it doesn't mean I need to act on that and it doesn't mean it's real. So I can feel a lot of fear, doesn't necessarily mean there's anything to be afraid of, okay? So I'm not gonna get into specifics, I rarely do, um, because that's something that we really should do one-on-one -on -one if we're going to do that. But this is something you can explore on your own. It's not a difficult technique or dangerous technique. You can just lay down comfortably, get still, get quiet, no music, no entertainment, no technique, no trying, okay? No mantra, no chakra meditation, nothing. Be still and know. Still and quiet. Very, very, very powerful. So powerful, and yet again, the ego almost always tries to make things more difficult and complicated than they need to be. So yes, as a teacher, I have many techniques because if I say to you, just stop, be still, be quiet, that's it. That's the whole extent of my teaching. Many people will not be able to follow those instructions. They won't get it and they won't get much from it. So I get it. One of the things I love about the Buddha as a teacher is it said he met his students where they were. He could see how they were perceiving reality. And so he would address them in a way that they could understand. He would point them in the right direction, even if what he was saying from an absolute truth perspective was not completely true. This is called skillful means when a teacher does this. And it's quite common in spirituality where a teacher with an absolute understanding of reality might give it an instruction that doesn't recognize that ultimate truth. It sort of points or acknowledges the practitioner's perspective, which is much like a dream or a nightmare. So the practitioner is having this dream and the teacher, the spiritual teacher shows up in the dream and acknowledges what the person thinks that they're perceiving and says, okay, here's the way out of the dream. Once the practitioner gets out of the dream, they realize, oh, that was just a dream. There was really nothing to be afraid of. Uh, and the instructions you gave me don't pertain to ultimate reality because ultimate reality is you were safe in bed the entire time. You weren't being chased by a monster, okay? That's the real truth, but the dream truth is, oh my God, what do I do about this monster? Monster's chasing me, I'm terrified. So the teacher shows up and says, okay, there's a way out, here it is. You follow the instructions of the teacher, you wake up from the dream. And then you realize, oh, the monster wasn't real, okay? So when we wake up from the dream, we don't ask the question, well, what do I do about the dream monster? We reckon, oh, that was a dream. There's nothing to be done about that. So again, very powerful teaching in my experience, very powerful technique, if you want to call it that, but it's not really a technique. It is the absence of technique, which is why I think it's so powerful. Be still and know, stop. I'll say from my own experience, again, I'm sharing this from my own experience. That is why I'm sharing it, because I have found it in my own practice extremely powerful. If you're a meditator, you might play around with this, especially if you do this style of meditation that I teach. Try getting on your, your cushion and really exploring stillness and silence there beyond what you might normally find and see what happens. 
for me, this was a very, very powerful technique that pierced through many layers of delusion, if you will. I was able to see things that I can't quite put into words, but I was able to glimpse ultimate truth through that just by being really, 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 really still. Okay. So explore this stillness and silence. And again, it does not require effort in the ultimate sense. Stillness and silence are what happens when we stop. Again, look at all the graves. These are all people who are still and silent. They don't have any energy. They're not making any effort, okay? So if you find yourself making effort, you're fighting yourself, all right? The effort that might seem like it is needed is just because of the momentum that you've created. So like a wheel that's been spun, it may not stop immediately, but if you allow enough stillness and silence, the spinning will slow and eventually it will stop, okay? Now this doesn't mean that we're going to necessarily experience some kind of blank state or have no thoughts or no feelings, but I will say that if this is done properly, the relationship with those will change, if not immediately, over time. So we are not bothered by thoughts. We are not bothered by emotions. We're not bothered by arisings, objects in awareness. All right, everyone. I hope this is helpful for you. As always, if you have questions for me, please reach out. I'd love to hear from you anytime. Again, if you've come this far, please support the channel by liking, subscribing, commenting and sharing and if you'd like to go a little further and help support this work with a financial contribution please check out the patreon page until next time everyone namaste and have a beautiful beautiful day